Hi, this is Michael, and I'll be discussing the cell biology technique of southern blotting. Now, before we get into southern blotting, let's talk a bit about other similar techniques. Many of you may know western blotting. A western blot is where people try to find a protein within a sample using antibodies to do this. On the other hand, northern blot is where we try to find RNA in a sample. We'll get into this later, but northern blot uses nucleic acid hybridization to detect RNA sequences. Southern blotting aims to detect DNA sequences, and like northern blotting, uses the hybridization of nucleic acids. Now I'll move on to the steps of a typical southern blot experiment. We first have a sample of genomic DNA that we want to test. Our southern blot will reveal if a certain sequence of DNA is in our sample. First, we treat this DNA with one or more restriction enzymes. Remember that restriction enzymes cut DNA at specific sequences. We are left with fragments of DNA after the restriction enzymes cleave this genomic DNA. We then transfer these fragments to an agarose gel to go through gel electrophoresis. This will separate the fragments by mass and shorter fragments will travel farther while longer fragments will travel shorter. These fragments of DNA are treated with an alkaline solution, which separates the double-stranded DNA into single-stranded DNA by denaturing them. These single-stranded DNA fragments are transferred onto a membrane by using a weight to press down on the membrane to the gel. Using a vacuum, microwave oven, or UV light, the DNA is then fixed to the membrane. Then, we will move on to detecting the DNA. So in order to detect the DNA, we have to use a probe. This probe is made of cDNA or complementary DNA, or it can be made of RNA. This cDNA or RNA is attached to P32 or a fluorescent dye. This will show where the hybridization occurred. The probe has a complementary sequence to the sequence that we're trying to detect. This is how it is able to hybridize with the DNA. These probes are then introduced to the membrane, and excess probes that do not bind with any DNA sequences are then washed off. After this, an X-ray film is put onto the membrane, and autoradiography is used to detect the desired fragments. After this, the probe is then stripped from the membrane, either by eluding it or using an alternate membrane. This membrane can then be stored for later use or disposed of. After autoradiography, bands will show up if the probe has hybridized to the gene sequence we are looking for. This is the point of the southern blot. So those were the steps to southern blotting. Let's go over what it actually shows us. The probe, being bound to P32 or a different fluorescent molecule, can be detected with autoradiography. The presence of a band shows that the gene is present, while the absence of it shows that the gene is not there. Additionally, there may be multiple bands in a column. With multiple bands, it shows that multiple of the gene are within the genome. This is due to having copies of the gene in fragments of longer or shorter length. Now I will explain some of the practical uses southern blot can offer. In a paper by Joe et al., we can see southern blotting being used to identify homologous recombination events in mouse embryonic cells. Many times, Homologous recombination is used in gene editing to modify an organism's genome within a different gene. Here's an image of the southern blot. The bands on the film here are where these recombination events occurred in the cloned embryonic stem cells. The image here shows the wild type show only 9 kb bands, while the mutated alleles show 12.1 or 6 kb bands. Here, we can see the power of southern blotting and we now know that there was a successful integration of the target genome into the organism. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something from this.